Welcome to my lecture online. Of all the years that I've been teaching physics, I never encountered a problem quite like this. However, when I first started thinking about it, I thought this problem was being a projectile motion problem. But then I realized that perhaps there's another way in which we can do this problem. So let me first go with my first hint, uh, hunch, and solve it as a projectile problem. And then let's see if there's a better and easier, faster method to solve this problem. Just stay tuned and we'll do another uh, video using the second method. So first let's read the problem. It says a particle of mass m is projected from the ground with an initial speed v sub naught at an angle theta with the horizontal. At the highest point of its trajectory it makes a completely inelastic collision with another identical particle which was thrown vertically upward from the ground with the same initial speed. The angle that the composite system makes with the horizontal immediately after the collision is, and they give us these four possible answers. So I started thinking, I said, all right, let's write it as a projectile problem. So we start from the ground. We have one projectile being fired at an angle, and that projectile will reach a maximum height. And notice that it starts with initial velocity v sub naught, which means that it has a horizontal velocity, v in the x direction, equal to v initially in the x direction, because the velocity is constant in the x direction until we hit, have the collision, which is equal to v initial times the cosine of the angle theta, assuming that this is the angle theta right there. And then in the vertical direction, we have v initial in the y direction equals v initial times the sine of theta. Then there's a projectile that's being fired from the ground upward with some initial velocity v sub naught. They both have mass m, so they're identical particles. And when the particle gets up to this point, they collide and then they go off at some angle. And so what we're trying to do is figure out what this angle is equal to after the two particles hit each other. They do tell us it's a completely inelastic collision, which means they will stick together and move out from that point together as a single particle. All right, so what I did was I started, okay, let's do the vertical motion first. And in the vertical motion, we can use the equation that v in the y direction squared is equal to v initial in the y direction squared plus 2 times g times delta y g being the acceleration to the gravity, delta y will be the height gained. So this here would be the height gained, which is our delta y. So we're going to solve that equation for delta y because we realize that our final velocity is equal to zero. So we can write zero is equal to my initial velocity squared, which is v initial squared times the sine squared of theta. And then this would be plus two g times delta y. There we go. And so if we solve this for delta y, we get delta y is equal to minus v initial squared sine squared of theta divided by, uh, let's see here, 2g. And remember that g is equal to a negative 9.8, so the negatives cancel. So now we're going to work with particle number two. And particle number two also has the vertical direction and let's see here, we're going to use the same equation of that particle. We're going to use v in the y direction squared is equal to v initial in the y direction squared plus 2g delta y. And of course, we're dealing with the same delta y that we have over here. My initial velocity in the y direction is simply going to be v initial squared. So this becomes vy squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2g times delta y, which is going to be equal to minus, well, the minus and the minus will cancel out. So we have minus v initial squared times the sine square of theta divided by 2g. Okay, like this. So I got that right in there. Good. And now we can see that, yes, indeed, the 2g's will cancel. And I can factor out a v initial squared. So I have v y squared is equal to v initial squared times 1 minus the sine squared of theta. This. And of course, 1 minus the sine squared of theta is the cosine squared of theta. So v y squared equals v initial squared 
times the cosine square of theta. And then I can take the square root of both sides and I get v sub y equals v initial times the cosine of theta. Now, what are the two velocities of the two particles when they meet? Let's take a look at that. So we have the two particles, they collide. This particle will have a velocity in this direction at the moment of collision. That would be v sub y, which is v initial times the cosine of theta. And this particle right here will have a velocity in this direction that will be the same as this velocity right here. It would be v in the x direction, which is equal to v initial times the cosine of theta. Now notice, both of these velocities of two, two particles are exactly the same when they collide. So when they collide and they stick together and they have the same masses, each has mass m, that means that they will go off at a 45 degree angle. So they will end up with an angle of 45 degrees. The reason, of course, is that the angle tangent of phi will be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. In this case, the opposite velocity is v initial times the cosine of theta. The adjacent is v initial times the cosine of theta, which is 1, and therefore phi equals 45 degrees, or pi over 4. And so, is that one of the answers? And we come up here, and sure enough, answer A fits the bill, which means when they both get to the same point in the sky, they will hit each other with the very same velocity, one going horizontally, one going vertically, and so they will shoot off at an angle of 45 degrees after the collision, and that is how it's done. Now this method probably takes more than three minutes, but as I was doing it also, and I realized there's another way in which we can do this problem, so we're going to try that second method, which should be a faster method, on the next video, I'll show you sometimes, if you think about it quickly, you can find a better way to solve it. But this is the way it's done using the equations of kinematics and projectile motion. You could just use a vector addition to figure out 45 degrees. After they collide? Yeah. Right, but you have to get to this point first where you realize yeah. what their velocities are. To do the tangent stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but the shortcut is to get rid of this method right here. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see how we do it faster.